May 6, 1896, on the Potomac River, 40 miles south of the capital, Samuel Pierpoint Langley watched from a riverbank as his assistants on the deck of his modified houseboat prepared his latest in a series of flying machines for a test run. Langley, secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, had been conducting experiments with flying models for the past 10 years. His team had developed numerous steam-powered models, all pilotless, that were launched by a spring-driven catapult. At the signal, Langley's one remaining model launched down the rail. It left the track 20 feet above the water, began to drop, but then suddenly and miraculously angled up and started to climb. The men on the launch boat, who had grown so accustomed to failure, were amazed. Nobody had ever gotten a powered flying machine that big into the air on what was clearly a sustained and impressive flight before. And so Langley was big news. But Samuel Langley wasn't the only inventor to receive attention for his flying experiments. A few months later, another aeronautical researcher, Otto Lilienthal, and his assistant carried a monoplane glider up the side of a large hill near Berlin. Over the last five years, this talented engineer had made close to 2,000 short flights using a dozen different glider designs. Lilienthal launched his glider by leaping into the wind from the side of a hill. Its bat-like wings, spanning 23 feet, lifted him gracefully into the air. The machine soared to 50 feet above the slope. But suddenly, and without warning, the nose of the machine pitched dangerously high. Alarmed, Lilienthal attempted to right the aircraft by shifting his weight to bring the nose down, but it was not enough. The glider stalled and plummeted back to Earth. The world's greatest aeronautical experimenter lay unconscious inside his crumpled machine. Lilienthal was without visible injury, but the crash had broken his spine, and he would die the next day. At that time, Wilbur Wright, now aged 29, was still living in his father's house in Dayton, Ohio. Two weeks after Lilienthal's fateful crash, Wilbur and his sister Catherine found themselves attending their gravely ill brother. 